Hey everybody, this is Liz. I'm a farmer and I help coordinate some of the grant programs for North Central SARE. And, you know, one question that we get a lot is about what SARE grants can pay for and what they can't pay for. So big picture, please know we do not fund just daily operations of farming. I wish we could, but we definitely do not. What we fund is innovation on farms that pushes agriculture forward. We have several different grant programs. Some are specifically for researchers, others for educators or ag professionals, and some are for farmers. And so I want to focus specifically on the Farmer Rancher Grant because we get a lot of questions about what it can fund in particular. If you need funding to run or start your farm, we are not the right fit. But if you are looking to gain the knowledge you need to fundamentally improve your farm's economic, ecologic, or social viability, and then share that knowledge, then we really might be the right fit. So what I would encourage you to do is ask yourself, what are your goals on your farm? How are you trying to push your farm forward? And do other farmers struggle with that same thing? Could a project benefit you and others? If so, that might be a really good uh, SARE proposal. So let's get into some of the details of what SARE grants can and cannot fund. First, we can't pay for building a structure or purchasing land, um, crop insurance, warranties. There's a whole list of stuff we are not allowed to fund. And so we encourage you to look at that closely. Um, but I think you will see that there are loads of things that we can fund from labor and personnel to data analysis and soil samples and um, materials and supplies for the types of innovative things you're wanting to test out on your farm or, or demonstrate. One other key thing here is that most SARE grants operate with a reimbursement structure. We've got a whole video talking about this, but just to summarize, um, you're going to need some cash flow to carry out a project um, because you don't get 100% of the grant funds up front. Last but not least, I'd direct you guys to our video with the nuts and bolts of how to put together your budget when you're actually um, crafting your proposal. So we've got a step-by-step -step directions on how to do that. And of course, look at the call for proposals for the grant program that you're interested in. That's going to have a whole list of what can be included in a SARE budget and what can't. Right now, let's hear from some past SARE grantees to see how they use their grant funds. Well, I'm Kelsey Brianna Smith. I am the Youth Education Manager here for the Allen Neighborhood Center. Uh, so what we have done with our youth programs for this particular grant is create a tea blends program that the kids were involved in from start to finish, where they learn how to identify the plants that are around here in the park uh, learn which ones are edible and which ones would make delicious teas for them. They study the flavor notes of different teas in their recipes, and they not only create their own recipes, but they market them both in distribution for wholesale through our Veggie Box CSA program and through direct marketing to our neighbors here at the Allen Neighborhood Center through our Allen Market. materials to start our tea program, uh, different packaging and stuff like that for distribution. Most of what we package here are things that are already growing here at the park, so that part didn't really play in any part in our, uh, our budgeting for our cause. Uh, we also made sure that there was enough to compensate the people who were involved in the project. So a lot of that had to do with not only uh, funding my time, but also giving honorariums to the collaborators that we had in the neighborhood. Uh, we gave honorariums to local farmers who would do walking tours with us and answer questions about how they did similar or somewhat different things uh, from their business standpoint so that the kids could get a better idea of how to conduct their business. 